protecting the patient. Let's discuss some language in regulations. By now you may have noticed some uniformity in the language utilized in radiation protection equipment regulations published by government health agencies and scientific communities. Should statements refer to recommendations. Shall statements are requirements and are required by government agencies with the power to assess fines or penalties if not observed. Some examples from your textbook, Radiography in the Digital Age, include All exposure switches shall be of the dead man type. A dead man switch is one that must be held down continuously to operate. If the operator were to faint, for example, the switch would be released and the exposure would terminate instantly. The X-ray tube to tabletop distance shall not be less than 38 centimeters for fixed radiographic unit. The TTD shall not be less than 30 centimeters for a mobile unit. The collimators are built large enough so that it would be impossible for the X-ray tube to be brought close to the patient because it would get in the way. If the collimator housing is too small, you may notice some metal rails or plastic cylinders attached to the collimator housing, making it impossible for the technologist to bring the tube in closer than these restrictions allow. During fluoroscopy, a cumulative timer shall emit an audible signal when five minutes of fluoroscopic beam on time is reached. The radiologist should employ intermittent fluoro and attempt to remain within this recommended exposure time limit for most procedures. That is at the radiologist's discretion, though. Radiographers should not impede the function of this timer. It can be reset when it sounds the audible alarm, but care should be taken not to interfere with its function. A fluoroscope routinely operated above 90 kVp should have 3 mm of aluminum equivalency for filtration. Make sure when reading through these guidelines and regulations to take note of the should versus shall notations. Fluoroscopic technology. While conventional fluoroscopes can deliver around 50 milligray per minute, modern advancements in technology provide additional options for imaging like high-level control fluoro, pulsed fluoro, and digital fluoro, all of which we'll be covering later in this course. But there are types of fluoroscopic imaging like high contrast or enhanced imaging procedures that increase the potential dose for imaging for very specific purposes. Newer machines have a dose limit of 100 mg per minute for AP positions and 200 mg per minute for lateral positions. Some also have louder audible alarms when total fluoro time reaches 10 minutes. With these increased doses, there's obviously increased risk, but the argument for allowing this type of technology onto market is simply that the physician is ultimately responsible for weighing benefit versus risk for every procedure. Additional safety techniques like pulsed fluoro can be utilized to reduce exposure all around. We can summarize the factors that contribute to fluoroscopic exposure rates in the following six items. The mode used, meaning magnification mode. The smaller the diameter of the input phosphor, or the higher the magnification, the more X-ray intensity is required to maintain image brightness at the output. The MA selected, operations in continuous MA mode versus pulsed MA mode, the actual source to skin distance used, the cumulative fluoro timer is used, and the number of digital spot exposures taken, which require greater exposure than live fluoro. Current issues. The Safe Medical Devices Act of 1990 requires reporting to the FDA serious radiation injuries or death. The FDA task force assigned to these reports has recommended the following procedures. Recording in the patient's chart the body part, field size, and technique used, and an estimate of the dose received by the patient. 
obtaining written informed consent from the patient regarding possible radiation effects of each exposure, a customized protocol delineating when the use of high-level fluoroscopy will be allowed, adoption of maximum allowable cumulative fluoroscopy time, and credentialing of all fluoroscopists, including physicians. It should also be noted that increased risk in recent years exists in the rising rate of CT scans. The FDA, along with the ACR, have established new guidelines and regulations for technical factors and the recording of doses for each of these exams.